In today's video, I am using macro and flash techniques to take a fruity photo just like this. So I'm in my studio today, and that's for two reasons, really. First of all, I have got COVID and it is kicking my ass. So the idea of going out and about and taking photos and hiking around with a backpack full of gear, absolutely not. But I found a project that I think is really, really fun and it brings together some great macro techniques, including focus stacking, including working with off-camera lights and blending those lights together to create a really, really great looking finish shot. Now the subject is really simple. It is the humble strawberry. Now a strawberry is a great example of something that you've probably seen at home many, many times. You may have eaten some this week, but when you really start to look close, it's actually a really interesting object. You've got so much texture from all those seeds, from that smooth flesh around it, from the green stalky bit on top. Then you've got all the colors, hopefully a lovely vibrant red that sort of fades out as it gets towards the top. So I found a really beautiful looking summer Scottish strawberry, and I've got it in this scene right here. So let's take a look at what the setup I've got. So as you can see, we've got the strawberry just on a little toothpick here, standing upright in the middle of the scene. And I've actually got three lights on this, plus a reflector adding almost an additional light. So let's call it three and a half lights. We've got our main key light here, coming in, lighting the strawberry from the left. We then got our background light, firing at our green background. And finally, one more light here with a snoot on. That's just giving a very, very narrow beam of light, which is just gonna light up that strawberry nicely. But I'll take you through what each of those lights does individually and the powers that they are putting out, because it really is one of those shots that only comes together once all of those lights blend seamlessly into one image. As you can see, I've gone for a green background here. This isn't anything special. It's just a piece of green paper from an art shop that, as you can see, I have just masking taped to my wall. This is not high production. This is something that anyone can do. You don't need a full paper sweep like these. Just a piece of green card stuck to your wall will do it. So as I said, we've got three different lights going on. The light on the strawberry, light in the background, and then one more snooted light um, just hitting the very front of that strawberry. And I'm gonna turn them all on individually just so we can see exactly what they're doing in our shot. I'm controlling them all with my trigger on top, but we're gonna start off by just taking a blank frame. Uh, I'm at about F13, 160th of a second, and my ISO as low as it can go at ISO 100. Now, if we just take a shot now, as we can see, that is a black frame. And that's great because that means that I know that when I start turning on these lights only, the light that I'm turning on will be appearing in the shot. The shot won't be affected by any of the big video LED lights which I've been using to film. Okay, if we turn my trigger on, and I'm gonna start off by turning on my A light, which is this light here off to the left, my key light, and that's gonna be adding the main light to the strawberry. Just gonna take this away for now. So my A light's turned on. Take my shot. And as you can see, that's just adding in this lovely uh, glow of light coming in from the left. It's, it's catching the top left of the strawberry only. The rest of it is falling pretty much into darkness. It is actually quite a dark shot. So I'm just gonna turn it down to maybe F10. Take that again. And now it's brightened up quite a lot. So it's a really, really nice look already, and it's definitely got like a lovely mood to it with that um, uh, very sort of simplistic light coming in, but that's not what I want for this shot. So what I'm gonna do now is just add in this silver reflector down here. It's gonna be out of shot. And if I take that same shot again, we can see now both sides of that strawberry has been lit, but we haven't added in another light. All that's doing is just reflecting some of that first light back in. That's a really great way of balancing the shadows in your shot without having to add a second light. Okay, let's turn that first A light off. And now we're gonna turn on our B light and that is our background light. Just firing at that green background. So if we just take that shot again, and now we can see the green is really nicely lit, it's evenly lit, and the strawberry is just a perfect black silhouette. So that means that that background light isn't affecting the strawberry at all, which is perfect. 
So I'm gonna turn that on and finally, we're just gonna turn on the last light and that is the light that I've just got off to my camera left and it's got a snoot on, creating a very, very fine beam of light onto the strawberry. And if I just fire that now, we can see it's just lighting up the front of the strawberry, adding in some extra detail, adding in some nice little highlights on the fruit. And I think that looks really, really nice. So with all my lights back on, I can take my shot again. And we've got a really lovely balanced image with a great background. The strawberry is catching the light perfectly. Lovely texture on all those fleshy parts. Everything's looking really nice. So I'm really happy with how the lighting works. I'm actually gonna take my shots properly now. But what I do want to also do is focus stack the shot. So that means taking different images, using different focus points on the strawberry and then blending those together so that everything is pin sharp. Because right now, if I focus right on the front of the strawberry, on these front seeds, that's fine. But then probably these seeds around the back or maybe parts of these green leaves, they're not gonna be in focus. And I wanna make sure that everything is pin sharp. So that's pretty easy to do. I'm gonna start off by focusing right on the front and already we can see that these seeds are not in focus, but now they are. But my first shot is gonna be one with my hand in the frame so that when I look back at these images in Lightroom, I know exactly where my real images are starting. So with that focus point done, I'm gonna take the shot and then I'm gonna zoom back in, slightly move that focus, take another shot, slightly move the focus, take another shot, and so on until we get towards the back of our strawberry. So now let's take those into Lightroom and Photoshop and piece them together. Also now I can eat the strawberry. It's really good. So here we are over in Lightroom and we can see we've got all of our strawberry images um, uh, down here. Um, it's looking really good straight out of camera, but I do want to warm it up ever so slightly. I want to bring up the shadows, tone down those highlights a little bit, and add a little bit of contrast. This is a punchy, colorful, vibrant, summery photo, so we're gonna be going with those punchy, vibrant colors. So let's go to the HSL. That's where most of the color work here is going to be done. First of all, this background looks a little bit on the cyan side with the green, so I'm gonna drag that green uh, a little bit further down, somewhere around here, I think it's already looking like a much nicer green tone. Uh, now with the yellows, I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna bring them down because it's just helping that yellow in the stalk on top stand out against those other colors a little bit. And the orange is where, as we can see, basically all of the strawberry color is coming from. So I do wanna bring that down much closer to the reds, make it a very vibrant looking fruit. If we go too far, it starts to go pink. So I think somewhere around minus, minus 20, I think is all we need. But there is, of course, plenty of red in there as well. And again, if we bring that down, we can start to make it more, well, right now, more pink. So very subtle here. Somewhere around minus, I think minus eight is really all we need, just a little hint. And if we bring that luminance down, the darker a color, the more saturated it is. So bring that down, minus 10. And I'm gonna lift that orange up a little bit and actually just adjust that hue. It's gone a little bit too pink for me. So maybe minus 12 on the orange, minus eight on the red, a little bit more. Look at that, before and after, just with that color on the strawberry, doesn't it look so much more vibrant, so much more juicy? Really pleased with this, okay. I think then that's everything that I want to do on the strawberry. So if I select all of these images, right click on the first, go to develop and then sync settings, check everything. And then that is going to paste those settings across all of the focus stack images so that our settings are the same. Now that's done. I right click, go to edit in and edit in Helicon Focus. Now Helicon Focus is a focus stacking uh, tool. You can do it in Photoshop, but I tend to find Helicon Focus does a better job. So I'm going to give that a go. So it's brought our images over into Helicon Focus. It stacks them up on the right. And hopefully I've got uh, method B ticked, which is the method I usually use. If I'm honest, I don't really know a lot of difference between A, B and C. Some shots, it does make a difference. Some people swear that method A or method C is the best one. But for me, 
method B tends to do the job 90% of the time. So let's click render and see where we get. And here we are, a lovely pin sharp from front to back strawberry. Look at all that detail, every bit of that is beautifully sharp. So let's go to save. We can save this as a TIFF file. I'm just gonna call it strawberry. Then I'm just gonna open that in Photoshop. And so here is our shot. And again, if we zoom in, we can see that that focus stacking has worked beautifully. Every bit of this, all of these tiny seeds, all beautifully sharp in focus, as are the leaves, as are the sides of the strawberry. It's done a really great job. So I'm gonna start off by duplicating that background layer so we've got it to go back to. And obviously we've got to do some work in getting rid of some of these objects. We've got the reflector here and we've got the stand uh, that I was using. So I'm gonna start with a patch tool on this corner bit here, just drawing around that and drawing the bit over to there. And there you go, straight away it's done. Off and on, look at that, beautifully done. And I'm gonna do the same again on this big bit of battery here, just slicing through that dragging it over here, deselecting. And it's done already a pretty decent job. With the stick, we're gonna to have to go a little bit more manual. And in this case, I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna start by taking a clone reading just over here, lining that up with our strawberry here. And then we just simply paint it in. And then on this side, I'm gonna do the same again. Line it up, paint it in and then we just clone in one of the seed bits to get rid of that bit of um, the stick. And so now we go back and in only a few minutes, we have basically got rid of that stick and it's looking much, much better. There is still some weirdness going on down here. So I'm just gonna grab the patch tool again, draw around this big bit of green and drag it to a new area. Maybe do that a few more times basically and just help smooth out that background. So we turn that off and on and look. Now we've got this lovely floating strawberry and it has taken us a matter of seconds. But next I'm just gonna go around and do a little bit of cleanup because there are some little um, extra bits on here that are sort of sticking out that I just think slightly make it look a little bit messy. Um, so I'm just gonna use the spot healing tool and just go around and just dot away some of these. I don't wanna to do too much because it is a natural thing. These are seeds, but just the way that that one in particular sort of is sticking out into the image, it just looks a little bit weird. Um, so I'm just cleaning up those ones. And here there's like a hair. So I really like how this is looking, but I'm just gonna do a couple more things. I'm gonna duplicate the layer again, just so that we've got a clean layer to work on. I'm going to filter and then camera raw filter. This is going to bring back up the same controls that we have in Lightroom, but I just think there's a little bit more tweaking I want to do here. First of all, slightly bring down those highlights and I'm going to go back into the color mixer and just play around a little bit more because I just think it's not looking quite right. Firstly, I think there's some more green we can pull out of these aquas because look, in the aqua channel, there's a lot in that background and what we want is a proper green here, but we're also gonna bring down the luminance of that aqua. So we've got a lovely green now. Back in the hue, I'm gonna grab that orange and I'm gonna move it down more into the pink. It's gonna look a little bit weird, but I'm gonna balance that by pushing that red back into the orange. Bring that luminance of the orange down a little bit, maybe even bring down that red slightly. So if I press OK on this, we can see what that's done. It's really brought back a much nicer, even red. Without it, if we look down here, just bring our eyedropper tool, that red is a very sort of pink red, but then up here, it's a completely different tone. Whereas now, we've got tones that are much more similar to each other at the top and the bottom. We've still got the light and dark, still got that shadow, but the tones themselves make a lot more sense. So I don't think there's anything more I want to do here because I want to make sure that it's still keeping a very natural look. But again, if we zoom in, I just love the amount of detail on here. All of these lovely seeds, everything is in perfect focus. Look at all the detail on these green leaves on the top as well. Those tiny little hairs all pin sharp, it looks amazing. 
So I think that brings me to an end of everything that I actually want to do with this photo. And to be honest, it might seem like a little bit of a weird project to do, but I think it's a great one to try if you are wanting to practice those macro uh, focus stacking techniques at home because you can't always practice when you're out on location. So, so really figuring out your process at home is a great way of honing those skills so that when you do go out, you really know what you're doing. And so sometimes it's just about finding interesting little objects at home to photograph and to practice on. Maybe it's a strawberry, maybe it's another kind of fruit or a vegetable, a bulb of garlic, or maybe it's an object, it's your phone, something like that. Whatever it is that you're using, try and figure out how to photograph it, how you want to light it. Maybe you need to bring in multiple lights and maybe you need to use focus stacking in order to get the shot you want. These are macro techniques that I use not only in my macro photography, but in my product photography as well. So these are techniques that I have spent a lot of time trying to learn exactly how to do it. And I've learned that by doing little experiments like this that just take me half an hour, an hour, on an evening, on a weekend. And every single time I learn a little bit more about how to do it. But I do hope that you found this video uh, useful or enjoyable. Um, if you have enjoyed it at all, please do hit that like button and do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.